Morning. Today we're going to talk about a hot topic for the developers or people who love in property developments about a new term called land banking. Or if it's been there for a while, and a new terminology called land holding, which is not just a vacant land. So land banking basically means when the developers and investor purchase a piece of land that is vacant, and their intention is to do subdivision. And then sell that in the future. So that those one or two or three years, the bridging period, we'll call that land banking. So what is land holding? Land holding means it's not just a piece of vacant land, okay? Even though the lenders, the bank, the valuer know that it is gonna be demolished soon anyway. Whatever house is gonna, uh, whatever house is on there at the moment. So land holding means there's an improvement which could be. A residential home could be a commercial shop or a warehouse that is rentable. Doesn't matter if the lease is less than twelve months or not.、Uh, after renovation or after the settlement, it will be able to rent out and have potential cash flow or current cash flow to assist the repayment of that bridging period. Just sounds better than.、Uh, A vacant piece of land. So the improvement, which is could be house, warehouse, and shop, rentable is the condition. If it's really crap, then the、um, purchaser may need to do something. They may need to get a、um, builder's renovation quotation and deposit an agent's approval that the the house could be rentable、uh, after the renovation、uh, in order to improve. The improvement improvements value. Now, entity, you have to use、uh, personal recommendation, a company,、uh, or a, a family trust or trust, a unit trust, and a company as a trustee、uh, to hold this property, so that this transaction or development is non NCCP, so National Consumer Protection. If you purchase this development site under personal name,、uh, then many lenders are highly regulated、uh, by ASIC. Then they are not allowed to lend money to you, okay? Because they will assume mom and dad doesn't have the capacity, knowledge, and risk appetite for such a large development. What's the LVR? Which means the loan ratio、uh, versus the value of the、uh, sites. The LVR is usually range between fifty、uh, percent to seventy percent for first mortgage. Now, do you understand there are some rural area or some、uh, agriculture land where a lot of lenders try to avoid, or they only lend to you、uh, by thirty percent. So otherwise, usually fifty to seventy percent. I can't give you an exact figure. Uh, until you have the size address, because、uh, it's really case by case. But overall, if you are purchasing somewhere, got a, a shop rentable or a house rentable, usually you can do up to sixty to seventy percent in today's market. Now, many people are interested about what's the rate, what's the rate. But I have to let you know, in commercial lending, rate could be a trap, because what you need to really look at is. The rate and the settlement fee and all other fee that associate with the settlements.、Uh, some people or some lenders call them application fee, risk fee, whatever fancy name you want. And also some、uh, brokers and banks will charge mandate upfront or by stages. Of course,、uh, don't let the validation fee and legal fee be ridiculous.、Uh, on average, it will be less than three to five thousand dollars for valuation. And also for legal、uh, firm, and make sure reputation. I put that last. It's very important. Make sure the uh, commercial uh, banker or commercial broker and a commercial lender department you're engaging with have very good reputation, including、uh, the valuation firm and legal firm they associate with. Okay, there are a lot of cases where people pay the money and they didn't get a loan and they couldn't get a refund, or there are a lot of cases. Where people settle their commercial loan,、uh, but then the terms 
wasn't explained very clear at the very beginning and they end up paying more than they expected. Now, back to the rate. In today's market, for example, if you got an interest rate for 7.5%, wow, many people say that's so high, but it's really not. Because if you uh, borrow money for your own home, now you can get an interest rate for 3% in 2020. But, the, but you are borrowing the money for 30 years and on average, uh, the home loan will last for 7.5 years in Australia, which means the banks give you a lower rate, but they earn you for longer time. Uh, for the bridging loan, really, uh, the term is usually one to three years max. And most lenders are only one year and then renewable every year after that. Uh, so the banks is only earning very short term, hence why they require higher return. Plus, this could be a higher risk. Settlement fee. You really need to put this in mind because, for example, if the settlement fee is 1.5% to 2.5%, I'll give you the market range, or 12% of the interest rate. So 7.5 to 12%. If the lender say, I'll give you 6% interest rate, but I'll charge you 5% settlement fee, or 2% settlement fee, but I'll charge you ridiculous $20,000 legal fee and $10,000 valuation fee, that actually this is all sum up is more than 10%, right? So there's a lot of trap in a land banking or land holding transaction. Now, term is very important uh, because if, now there's another terminology uh, called cap. This is very, very crucial. Capping the cost. What, what I mean by that is, if you borrow 70% uh, for $1 million and the interest rate is 10% and if they cap the interest for the term one year, that means you're only getting uh, 60%. So I will lend you $1 million for one year at 10% interest rate uh, and 70% LVR. The interest rate for 10 percent for a year is 100k so end up you only get six hundred thousand dollars on the date of settlement now if you borrow two years for the term at the very beginning that means on the date of settlement you only get five hundred thousand dollars and if this land banking is not renewable then you have to make sure the subdivision and pre-sale and everything else can be done, right? Within the time frame. So that you can, the access strategy that they will always ask is you get a development approval and then you refinance to the major bank. If it's a hotel, you have a management right. If it's a lot of townhouses, you achieve the pre-sale and so on. Okay. Now, the breakout cost is something you will need to look at. The breakout cost say 3% of the total loan amount as the penalty then it's quite expensive. Or some lenders will say, well, if you settle uh, on the settlement day, you pay me extra 0.25 of the settlement fee, then I'll be happy. Then it could be work out cheaper. So this is the cost you need to really, really ask at the very beginning. If they don't know, that means they don't have the experience or they're trying to trap you at the end. Some lenders charge two, three or six months interest up front as the breakout cost. And there are minimum term uh, and minimum amount of money the lenders want to earn. So make sure that is real as well. Reputation, very, very important. Minimum term and a notice. Overall, this could be simple, but it could be complicated. I hope that uh, you can find a trustworthy partner and get the deal done. If you are developers, and uh, interested in property development, hook me up. I can let you know uh, the best land banking deal in the market. And if you are brokers, uh, also contact me. I'm more than happy to share uh, my resources and uh, you can deliver that to your uh, clients. I'll see you next time.